It was the night before Christmas and all through the Premier League. Not a creature was stirring, except for Steve Keane. His security locks, CCTV cameras and guard dogs were positioned with care in case any Blackburn fans disguised as St Nick should be there. The players were nestled or snug in their beds, with visions of trips to Peterborough and Barnsley next season running round in their heads. However, the Rovers fans were finding it hard to nap as they mulled over how their team had become so crap. Out there in the stands against Bolton they had made such a clatter that the Venkis representatives had flown over from India to see what was the matter. The press had leapt upon the situation like a flash to see what the Indian owners were going to do with their cash. Meanwhile, ahead of the Boxing Day trip to Liverpool, Keane was hoping for new fall and snow so that the game would be called off and he wouldn't have to go. When what to his bleary eyes should appear, a sight that made him come over a little queer. It was a limo with a driver and a passenger riding pillion. Keane knew in a moment that the man on the left was former club chairman John Williams. The driver was Sam Allardyce and behind the two a whole host of faces of fame. Williams turned around and began to call them by name. Now Sutton, now Bassey, now Shearer, now Newell. On Gallagher, on Garner, on Lisso, on Friedel. Williams parked a vehicle up outside the wall. He turned to the others and said, now let's pay our friend Keane a little call. As Blackburn defenders before a wild striker fly when they meet with a challenge and just start to cry, but not this determined bunch. Up over the wall they flew with a bag of tools and a P45 too. In a twinkling, Keane heard them on the roof. Truth be told, he was feeling a little uncouth. The Blackburn boss drew in his head from the window and turned around. Down the chimney came the crew with a bound. Williams was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot. Angry mood and he flung back his head he flung his head back and shouted at Keane, how on earth have you not got the sack? His eyes looked fearsome, he was certainly not merry. To Keane he looked like an angry version of John Terry. Williams' mouth drew up like a bow. He could not control his fury any longer, he just let it go. His words came pouring out through gr gritted teeth and what made Keane feel even more uncomfortable was that Allardyce was holding what looked like a funeral wreath. Big Sam held the item loosely around his expansive belly. The sight of it made Keane's legs turn to jelly. There was no doubting Allardyce was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf. But since he'd left Blackburn he'd gone on to West Ham and, and done well for himself. Big Sam gave a sly wink of his eye and a twist of his head. Keane was left with a feeling of dread. Now it was Big Sam's time to have a word and he spoke of Keane's work. He highlighted the poor signings and tactical deficiencies. Keane felt a jerk. After making his points, Allardyce laid his finger on his nose. The ex-Blackburn congregation then gave a nod and back up the chimney they rose. They got back in the limo and let out a despairing whistle. Keane was a beaten man. You could have knocked him down with a thistle. Williams was heard to exclaim as he drove out of sight. There's no way that visit will stop us from being relegated though. We're absolutely bloody rubbish. Merry Christmas from all at Spreadex.